Okay, welcome to the last bit, the epilogue. And so it was that the Ice Queen's rule crumbled. The sun rose just hours before the battle ended, and because of the, this was the midnight sun, the one that would shine all through the spring and summer without ever setting, the enchanted iceberg melted as quickly as it had been conjured. Spires fell, walls sunk, and the ice oozed out into the sea. Nothing remained afterwards, not even the music box or the silver trees. The tribes boarded their sleds, and at the invitation of the feather chief and chieftainess, raced across the ice towards the nether cliffs. There was a time for hiding and a time for fighting, but this, as everybody knew, was a time for feasting. Long into the next day, the tribes talked, ate and drank, goblets of cloudberry juice inside the lost chambers, and as so often happens when adventures end, the stories begun. Tales of blizzard balls and wolverines, of willow snatch and cursed musk oxen, but no story was as bold and as magical as the one Esther Flint and Blue had to tell. There were interruptions, of course, for stories in their first telling, very rarely neat or simple, but despite those dramatic gurgling sounds when recounting the episode with the Thunder Ghost, despite Pebbles yapping at the Ice Spider incident, and despite Tompkins' apologies to Flint for the doubting his inventions or the power of Earth and War's magic, the trio did eventually get to the end of their tale. And all the while the Golden Eagle perched Nesca's shoulder, and the girl wondered whether the bird would leave her now for the quest was over. But then a new story was told by Wolftooth, one from a father to his daughter about a woman who had befriended an orca while caught out at sea. The whale was never tamed, but that would be like trying to tame the waves, for the animal shared a bond with the woman right to the end, and Eska began to understand that even though his adventure might be over, something that would not, and could not be broken, would be left in its wake. Friendship, between a wanderer and a golden eagle, but also between them and a fox puff and an inventor boy and a little girl with a very large heart. There was singing and dancing in the hours that followed, and the feather tribe sang of ancient giants, and much to the grey man's delight, but he made a point of not showing it, and by complaining extra loudly when the, about the crypt back he had acquired when crawling through the entrance of the lost chambers, because giants had nothing better than a good dose of sympathy. The fur tribe danced and reenacted all of the legendary hunt that involved a lot of stamping and quite a few drums, and the tusk we told their ancestors' stories through soapstone carving. As midnight drew near, everyone gathered outside the lost chambers. The sky was still a dazzling blue, but despite the sunlight, six stars glinted like faraway diamonds. The sky god's magic was there for all to see, and even though the tail of the little bear had lost one of its light, the constellation seemed to burn brighter than it had done before. And, to Esker, Flint and Blue, the stars felt like a reminder of the dear friend they had buried in the nether cliffs a few hours before, and of what the smallest and most unlikely of tribes could do with a pocket full of courage. Eventually the tribes dispersed, high from a night of celebration and full of promise, for an awkward and awakened a harmonious open world. A plan was formed by Wolftooth from Wildpool for the following weeks, because when grown-ups get involved, that really happens, but this was a plan built of wanderer rules and fur tribe inventions, and the hideaway behind the giant's beard was to be Wolftooth and Esker's home for a while, until the season changed and they felt like moving on. First though, Flint had a detour he wanted to share with Esker. One that involved cloud cushions, weather clocks and moonlight hammocks. But just as Wildpaw and Wolf, Wolftooth were readying their sleds, there was a roar that shook the core of the highest mountain. Two enormous elephant bears bounded through the snow and stopped before the gathering. Eska dipped her head at the bear and then she climbed up to one while Flint, Blue and Pebble mounted the other. The children didn't need to tell the bears where they wanted to be taken. The elephant bears already knew this was a journey home. They charged through the cliffs, and as her gold eagle cried out in the sky above, Eska leant close to the elephant bear, and her words were hushed and almost lost to the sound of thundering paws. But the wind heard it and carried her voice up and up, past the eagle's wings and beyond the peaks of the nether cliffs, until it reached the constellations glittering over the kingdom. This is the wild, Eska whispered to the sky gods, and the wild doesn't play like ordinary. Mm. And that is the end of Sky Song. Thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed Sky Song, then there are some other books by the author. The author is Abby Elphinstone, and she has also written The Dream Snatcher, The Shadow Keeper, and The Night Spinner. Now, I've not read any of them, but if you manage to get them, um, then please let me know what they're like, because I've really enjoyed that, so I might have to grab one of her other books.